Today's presenter is Scott Ritter, Senior Product Manager. He will focus in on how you can use your security system to meet your health and safety requirements. I will hand the floor over to Scott to start today's presentation. Over to you, Scott. Thank you, Elise. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending today. My name is Scott Ritter. I've been involved in the security industry for over 15 years at Gallagher in a variety of roles. And with today being the World Day for Safety and Health at Work, in today's webinar, I'll discuss how your Gallagher security system can best be used to meet your health and safety needs. Gallagher has been implementing solutions that allow our customers to solve significant problems they face on a daily basis for a number of years. I'll, show, I'll share with you some of our experiences and learnings from customers around the world as to how we've been able to help them be proactive in avoiding serious incidents on site that can lead to production downtime or injury within the workplace. One of the key messages I'd like to get across is how we can provide a solution that is more than just opening doors. It is more about solving the problems you may face within your organisation. I'd also like you to think within your organisation or of your customers' organisations and identify the type of problems they're currently experiencing. What would be the benefit of solving these types of issues? Today, I'll offer some expert advice of how to, how to deal with some of these problems. Here's our traditional access control model, consisting of an access credential and a group membership. This is the cornerstone of any system. The standard access control system will sim simply open doors. We strive to offer much more than this. We start by adding extra layers of value from this information and solve a range of customer problems. The data is all captured in our database from the standard access control decisions. We've created innovative ways to use this data smarter. We're able to provide the right information to the right people within the organisation, whether it be through push notifications, emails, SMS, mobile apps, or presented through the command centre platform. Firstly, let's start by looking at certification and licensing, or as referred to in command centre competencies. With the Gallagher's competencies feature, we can allocate a certification to a cardholder and then ensure the certification is enforced at the door. This is all done at the controller in real time. There's no reliance on the server. Some good examples of this could be a forklift license, preventing access to the warehouse if your license is expired, or perhaps a security clearance for those high security sites, only providing access to those secure areas if your site, if, of your site, if your clearance is valid. However, the most important part of this functionality is to, is to be proactive about warning individuals when their competencies are about to expire, or to notify others, such as their supervisor, as the last thing most organisations want is for their staff to be not able to work due to a certification being expired. There are a number of ways this can be managed. The most common is through the T20. Directly as you badge your credential, a warning can be displayed at a pre-configured time prior to the license expiring. Emails or SMS can also be configured to be sent. Multiple warning periods can be created, so emails can be sent to individuals as well as their supervisor or health and safety officer. These warnings will typically escalate to different recipients as it becomes closer to the competency expiring. Reports here can also be run to determine who, who needs to have any licensing or certification renewed. And the competency information can all link to the likes of training databases. So this information can be imported automatically through the likes of uh, the REST API or EDI within Command Center. Moving on to our second piece of functionality, um, Action on Access. As it describes, Action on Access functionality provides the ability to provide an action to an individual when they badge at a nominated reader. For example, access 
for contractors is only given once they have badged their card at a reader within the site's reception area. It's a daily hazard board is located in this area. It ensures that they must have seen this at the start of the day. Until they have done this, they have no access throughout the rest of the site. The access provided will only be enabled for a configured period of time, say like 10 hours, meaning they will need to return to the following day to badge again. This is the added benefit of enforcing contractors to badge at the start of the day. Ensuring ac accurate time reporting can be done to, to re reconcile um, contractors' invoices. This functionality can be used to add competencies, cards, or access groups. Can be used to add or remove these based on a successful entry or exit at the door. Another good example where this has been effectively used is within a hospital with medical interns arriving at an operating theatre to view or assist a particular procedure. They'd normally have access, they wouldn't normally have access to the operating theatre. However, with this functionality, they can check in with the receptionist, they can validate their identity and that they've been registered for, for, for viewing the procedure. They can then simply have their card badged at the reader behind the reception desk and enabled for a couple of hour period. Research, this can all be done without any access to command center at all. Next, I'll move on to random selection of card holders as they enter site. Random selection allows for an automated site-wide mechanism to randomly select individuals for predefined testing. Drug, alcohol and PPE checks are good examples here. The functionality all runs at the controller and can be used to either deny access or provide messaging on a T20 to the person who is selected. They must then acknowledge this message before they, before they gain entry. Here's a good example of the messaging on the T20. Clear instructions can be provided instructing the person selected of what they need to do. All actions on the T20 are audited so that when an individual clicks acknowledge to accept they've read the message and then entered site, this is all logged and can be reported on easily. To give some idea of the flexibility of the solution, I've shown a couple of configuration screens to show what can be achieved. The selection probability can be configured differently for different groups of people. Some may be more at risk, you know, 80 to 100% selection rate can be configured. Those that are less at risk, um, a, a low percentage um, of being selected can, can be chosen for them. An optional schedule allows random selection to be disabled at certain types of day. And this is, this is useful if, um, if, for example, the test clinic is only open at certain times of the day, you don't want people to be selected um, when it's closed. Random selection can be configured to limit the number of selections over a period of time. You can uh, select a capacity limit on the number of selections that occur over a period of time. This is there as a rate limiter where there is a a limited number of people that can be processed from the selection process at once. And also be able to ensure at least everyone is selected over a set duration of time. With random selection, the most common use case is for alcohol testing. The integration with the alkalizer is used to test the selected cardholders. The Centurion model, the unit shown at the top, is used predominantly for 100% testing. It detects whether alcohol is present or not. It is similar to the ones the police use at, uh, at roadside stops. Well, the unit on the right is called a WM4, wall mount 4, and a straw is used in this case to, to blow into the hole in the centre of the unit. It will return a specific back level and the unit can be configured for what would be a pass or a fail to, to determine whether you'll be granted access or not. 
Now, I've just got a brief video here to show how some of this functionality between random selection and alkalizer work together. You can see they've got a station here for randomly selecting card holders. This, this could be at a station or um, on a physical door. Um, just showing some of the functionality here that I described earlier, the configuration of the unit. And the second person's being randomly selected, flowing into the alkalizer unit and um, they've failed and um, their, their competency has been disabled so they can't access anywhere in, into site. Intuitive instructions shown on the T20 to um, show what must need to be done um, if you fail a test. And all reportable, so all, all the events, activities are held within the audit trail and able to be reported on um, at a later date. This takes me on to fatigue and exposure monitoring, also referred to as regulated zones within command centre. The fatigue and exposure module is primarily used to monitor how long individuals have been on and off site for. The primary goal is to identify at risk individuals and proactively monitor them to prevent an accident occurring to others or to equipment on site. As individuals become more fatigued, they're more likely to have an accident affecting theirs or others' safety. How do we do this? We set up what we refer to as a regulated zone. This is a collation of access zones and groups of people that are monitored through these zones. We can then set up a number of rules for these regulated zones to follow, such as the time people have been on a shift. For example, no more than 10 hours a day on site for any particular day. Or how long have, have you been off site? For example, you must have a 12 hour break once you've left site before you can return for your next shift. Or how long have you worked across shifts? Um, for example, you cannot work more than 100 hours in any given 12 day period. Th these types of rules can all be configured um, against any regulated zone. When a rule such as those described is in violation, there is there's options to deny individuals access, generate alarms and send notifications. Um, I've got another small video here to give you an idea um, and um, on how this works. This is showing an example here of a site with some, um, I've got some workplace rules, but they're not stringently enforced. Um, got one here, no longer, no shifts longer than 14 hours um, in the workplace. Um, no enforcement around that or automatic enforcement, um, really a guideline. Implications of that, um, fatigue workers and um, easy to have accidents um, in the workplace. Using command centre to enforce these workplace rules, um, can um, generate alarm, send out emails, as soon as an individual that's um, been detected to, to have exceeded the workplace. You can send someone to, um, to, to remind them to remove them from the site, send them home for the day. Another good example here is around exposure management. People might be working in an area where, where they could be exposed to, um, to, to chemicals or equipment um, and want to keep that to a minimum each day. You can see once this is succeeded, um, site maps can highlight what zone they're in, then the alarm instructions out to the guard. It's really fully integrated into the full command center. So, 
So anything you think command center that you can do with a standard alarm, you can do with a big management. Back to the guard to uh the information the Sales within the hands that can be updated. Later the next day. Yeah, just enforcing people have had enough time, but off between shifts, should have finished the check at the GTP and read it. Why that being like So notifications is an important aspect of command center. Broadcast notifications is a powerful feature to provide the ability to send messages quickly to certain groups of people within command center. We we're able to identify individuals that, for example, have been on site today, who have a first aid competency or are off site, who are not in the building today. Send the messages specifically for them to those people that need to know about the incident or, or message they need to be alerted of. When I've discussed this functionality with customers, I had an interesting story I thought I would share. It involved an armed defender outside a facility. Police have been, had been had advised that, that they locked down the building. This all happened and the building was locked down successfully. A staff member, however, was locked outside and knocked on the door and subsequently they were let in. Um, they then decided the door was faulty as it was normally in free access um, and proceeded to prop the door open. Luckily, nothing bad happened, but this does show the importance of being able to provide situational awareness to staff when these types of incidents occur. Another example in Wellington in 2016, the city was hit by a strong earthquake in the early hours of the morning. They were quickly able to advise staff that were due to attend that morning to stay at home. They were able to get the right information out to the people that needed to know about it. These notifications can be configured to be sent direct to Mobile Connect, a Bluetooth application, via email or via SMS. It is quick, simple to use through pre-configured messages that can run from the command center workstation or be completely automatic, triggering based off specific actions within command center, such, you know, such as a panic button being pushed. Tag boards and evacuations is the last feature I'll touch on. And these are really about being able to monitor the location of individuals based on their last known location. Tag boards originated from requirements from several mining customers where they have physical tag boards, such as that one shown in the image. When an individual went underground, they put their, they put their tag onto the board. This board needed to be clear before they performed any hazardous tasks within the mine. Moving to an electronic tag board within Command Centre, they'll be able to reduce the time to clear a blast from 45 minutes down to 15. It meant that they could get an extra blast in during, due to the efficiencies gained. With tag boards, the system knows who's currently on site and what zone they're in. The information can be graphically shown on a tag board showing whether the monitored zones are clear or occupied and who is in and who is in them at the time. Visual representation is always is also very useful when monitoring a facility during an emergency situation. This will also been used for a range of other applications to monitor secure areas of the site, such as a server room, so you can quickly identify who and how long individuals are in these zones and easily see irregularities. 
can be filtered just to monitor contractors. So certain types or groups of people can can be monitored and their movements could be monitored throughout the site. Mobile evacuation functionality, which we have recently introduced in version 820, provides a real time tagboard like functionality on mobile devices to allow sites to de deliver a mobile evacuation solution that will keep customers safe in an emergency situation, improving situational awareness of the cardholder location outside of the control room. Got a couple of screenshots here of um, what it looks like on the <coughs> excuse me, on the mobile device. You can see here we've got a, a new concept called a monitored zone, which in this case is the lobby. It holds five card holders in there in this example. And below that are the access zones that's, that make up this monitored zone. Once expanded, you can see the amount of individuals in each of these access zones. So this might represent the building that um, is currently under evacuation. It's, as people approach, they can either be manually moved um, to the person with the mobile tag board. They can be they can be menu they can be identified and manually be moved, or using their card, they can be um, badge at the mobile reader and they can automatically be moved into the evacuation zone. Should individuals remain in any of these access zones, they, they can be easily drilled down into to find contact information to contact them to find out if they've already left the facility or they're still within the building. Multiple of these uh, mobile tag boards, uh, mobile devices can be used for the one evacuation point and they all automatically update seamlessly um, and, and, and stay in sync with each other. So really efficient way, flexible way to um, perform uh, evacuation on site. Also means that we're not fixed to a particular location for, for an evacuation. Um, in a particular situation, they could easily move the, the, the evacuation point. So this has been a brief summary of, um, of our solutions that are available from Gallagher that will be able to assist you with your health and safety needs within your organisation. To get more detail on these solutions, con contact your local Gallagher representative or make contact through us um, via our website or um, through your normal contacts. I'd just like to finish off with having a think about the problems that you face within your workplace and how we can help solve these problems for you. We also have a range of videos and promotional information um, on these features discussed today on our YouTube channel or on our website if you want to find out more. Thanks for your time today. I'll um, now take any questions that you may have.